Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, we should actually share a little known fact. Last that that's you playing the guitar on that opener, right? Oh man, that was not me, but I could say it was me. It'd be pretty easy to be me. I, I love it. I, it's just, um, I dig it. it. It's a fun, it's a fun opener because it's just such a sweet, sweet, clean guitar. It reminds me of some of the great guitar. In fact, you know, some that uh, played back in the blues, the oh, jazz. Yeah. A lot of really strong jazz stylings in there. No distortion, just raw notes across a crisp fretboard. You know, and clean, buddy, through a Fender amp. I'm sure it was. I definitely think it was a jazz guitar hollow body was playing for sure. But it was a. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Flight School. This is my buddy, Bill Dolan, sitting here to my, I don't know which would be, but it mean to my right. It would be my right. Yeah, that's probably my right. That's Bill. Yeah. And uh, Bill is pretty, pretty amazing guy. Pretty, pretty awesome guy. Well, um, thanks. And, 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 I get to, and I get to be the co-pilot, your wingman for the wingman. incredible Mac Crumb. And, oh, you know, I, I, one of the things that's really exciting about being able to have a program with you and to just support you, be here for you, be your cheerleader, be your facilitator, whatever role you want me to be, is I'm hoping that with each episode, more and more people are hearing your story mm -hmm. and hearing the journey because all of us, and I mean all of us, have stories. All of us have crap we're going through. Yeah. All of us have brokenness in our life. All of us have points of discovery and seasonal change. And, and the one thing is, it's no matter where you are, no matter what your experience, no matter what your doubts are, um, I know that your story and your wisdom is uniquely positioned to say, I hear where you are, I understand, and I've got some things that can really help you. Mm. And that's what I love about you um, and that you get to weave in, weave in some of the stuff about you. I mean, it's, it's crazy, incredible, inspiring, even as we talk about um, the subject that we've been talking about for a couple of weeks. And that is how do you find your fifth gear and to elevate into your uh, place of, of conscious competence? Yeah which I know is something that you teach in your coaching classes, right? Yeah, I do. I try to, that's for sure. Uh, that's, the, that's the whole basis behind things. And man, I thought we could probably just end the show right there. I'm all like, I'm, I'm flying high already. I'll save that recording and, and make a promo <laughs> for Matt Crump. Good, good Lord, have mercy. Uh, we, I mean, we could talk for days about Bill Dolan, things you've been through and be able to experience in your life too. What a, what a great joy for both of us to be here and share some great, great things that we've been, not that we are better than anybody at all, but man, have we got some stories to tell? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think that they can be highly, I don't think, I know they can be highly beneficial to other people that are out there. And by the way, if you're watching the show today, folks, put your phones on mute, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, oh, thanks, man. I think I'll do that. No problem. That, me too. I'm going to do the same. I'm getting thing. notifications easy, even as we go. It's like, whoa. I know, I know. My phone's crazy too. We have to put it on. We got to put it on pause sometimes. Got to put it on pause. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's so great to be able to do this show. And, and you're right. We've been digging into some areas, the the four learning stages, which uh, maybe a lot of folks might might be aware of and maybe, maybe you're not. But, um, you know, that's those four little blocks that have been talked about for a long time. Uh, where we've been camping out lately has been at that last place of unconscious competence. So it was really where you started off as a as a dummy with something you have no idea what it's about, and then you get involved in some training at work, and they show you a few things. You're like, okay, I kind of I get this. I'm I realize that I can do this, but I still don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. To the point where you're like, okay, I got this. I can do this now. And you start working it out. You make a couple of mistakes here and there, but you find your groove to a place where you're grooving and it's your thing. You're knocking it out. And you don't even have to think about what you're doing anymore per, for the most part, because you're just really flying high where you're at with that task ability, whatever the case may be. That's that place of unconscious competence. And what we've been talking about lately is how to, how to take time to look at that place of unconscious competence, which is something that a lot of people don't do because it seems like you don't really have to because you're in your groove, you're in your spot. Why would you even think about it? Because things are going all right. doesn't mean you don't have continuing education. doesn't mean you don't look to expand upon things, but there's places where we just can do things 
and not even think about it. For example, um, I mean, I could just pick up a guitar right now and if I wanted to and just start playing a guitar and play a song. I don't even have to think about it. I don't think where my fingers go. I don't have to stare at the fretboard. I don't have to do anything. I just play the guitar. It's an unconscious compass. Now, I, I spent a lot of time to get that place, but I could just do it now, right? doesn't mean I can't learn a new song and I'll have to work on the new song. But I have a place of that area where I can work that unconscious competence. So for us to go to that place of unconscious competence in our lives and look at that and unpack it to see what that is and then be able to effectively communicate that to other people, empowering them to do what you're doing uh, is, is a great new opportunity for not only you, but for the other people. And inside of this tool of fifth gear, it's designed in such a way that uh, for the person who has, is doing the tool, trying to unpack that unconscious competence, you may find new places for yourself that you didn't know were there, um, but you're like, man, now I can do this, or I shouldn't have done this, and and you can really grow in that area as well. And then when you do that, you can teach other people, and it just makes a, a great thing. So that's kind of where we're at with some of our our teachings through uh, through this particular model. We did start off in the in the first episode of Flight School with uh, some of the things that Bill has in his book, The Seven DRM, which is right behind you. He's got a website for that incredible book. And we were really kind of talking about, there it is. We are talking about some uh, some places of uh, of good grounding, a good solid platform in your life, um, some, some places where you should really be able to dig into mission, to vision, to know who you are, what you're doing, those types of things. Um, we started there. And we're going to go back to that for sure. Uh, but it kind of moved into a different direction. And, and Bill brought up a couple of things that leaned into this tool that I created called the called the fifth gear. Well, could you and, do this, could you do this Matt? And, 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 when we talk about the fifth gear, gear. Could, the benefit of review and for those people that are joining for the first time, could you walk us through those those four levels? I think a lot of us have heard about the idea of, mm -hmm. of consciousness and competence and that curious mix that people walk through. And uh, uh, walk us through those four basics that lead to this idea of being consciously competent and what you teach, and that's the fifth gear. Right, right. So there's the four blocks that we talked about, and you can see them right there. The first one, unconsciously incompetent. So let's, let's talk, take one second. And, um, and I know that, for example, <clears throat> just to clarify here, we're not talking about everything that there's probably things that people are listening to that are like, wow, I'm really good at this. And, and they're great at it, but maybe, and I'll just say this, you know, before my death experience, I tell people that in some ways I was very much an absentee father and husband because I was on the road. I was doing television shows and entertainment shows and large scale, you know, events and festivals and doing, having the time of my life, making a lot of money, feeling like I'm changing lives. And I was, and I am, I am a great television director. That is a gift that I have that has been honed over 30 years. But I realized that I was, I was failing as a father and I was mm. failing as a husband by not showing up. So no matter what kind of accolades you have in, in your world or how much money you make or how many trophies you have on your wall, there are areas in your life that are foundationally critical that you go, oh, my gosh, I'm that first box on there. You put, put that back yeah. up. Yeah, you can put my face on that. Unconsciously incompetent. I did not know what I didn't know. But there was a wake-up call, and it moved to consciously incompetent. It's like... Right. Holy crud! Um, I'm not doing well in this. I, I I gotta I gotta do something better about it. And then you start that piece where you go, okay, I'm gonna do this, and you start working at it. Now, I'm using the example of being a father and husband. The whole idea of dynamic relationships. I would I would admit it's it's as wondrous and mysterious as the universe. You still have to work at it all the time. Yeah. But in my case, I can say I moved from being consciously incompetent to now being consciously competent. And I would just say better at it, way better at it um, across the board, ultimately leading to where, um, and I'm really thankful that people refer to me and how my 
focus in life has talked about the idea of love and loving that every person is worthy to be loved and to be honored and respected and to change everything about my being and my posture uh, to make sure that people feel honored and they know that they're loved and to do everything I can to help them on that journey. I realized I'm now doing things just unconsciously that I seem to be good at. Yeah. Uh, that's only because people are reporting it back and saying, Hey, that made a difference. And I'm like shocked. Really? They go, yeah, that made a difference. So Bill, do you think that, um, I mean, obviously you had a massive, massive, uh, Kai Rossmo, massive experience in your life. And, uh, it, it may not be as, as massive for other people as it was for you yet. It could be just as impactful. I mean, you, you died, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, the thing you talked about there uh, just a moment ago was that you became more consciously confident about a few things. And one of those things was about love. Do you think that after your experience, after that moment you had, that when you came out of it and you had a chance to look back at some things, you said, wow, this is where I'm extremely uh, insufficient in my life. And you focus more on, on, on not say adding that to your life because you probably, you had it for sure, but uh, implementing it even more with a stronger emphasis. Do you think that that focus shifted for you then? Oh, it completely did. That move from unconsciousness to conscious and saying, okay, I want to get better at this. Now, Grant, I mean, this is one, one of many, many areas of which I've discovered my incompetence, many areas, um, you know, and it could be, you know, how you work or it could be your attitude it could be your mindset it could be where you are in terms of 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 uh, your belief systems um you know among many things so in that area of love i realized that i love i still do i'm still married to my high school sweetheart so it's not all past tense yeah, I, awesome. I, I loved love my wife okay and i loved my kids but there's a difference between the degree with which you express that. And it moves from lip service and a good intention to so actionable that it is abundantly clear that this truly is a priority in your life. You're actually putting um, actions behind it. Not just say, in, in my case too, quick note, and I don't want to belabor this because I want to get on to where we move on with that fifth gear piece is that I also, and this is a challenge we have, we often have a paradigm that has been modeled for us that we think, oh, this is the right way. For example, this is the right way to be a leader. And later on, you learn that that's not leadership. This is the right way to be a good provider, you know, and they realize, no, that's not really the right way. So in my case, for me to grow my career, and to make money and put a roof over my family's head and send my kids to private school or blah, 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 whatever it was that I had this list. I thought when I was out doing that, t -t -t -t, that was the manifestation of my love for them. And it was me mistaking a desire and destiny to be the best father or husband I could be with the duty I attached to what that looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and I just didn't I didn't get it. I was blind to it because the culture with which I I was raised told me it was a dutiful story versus a story of of real desire and action and caring and sacrifice. Yeah, in all in all the other in all the other ways, you know. So that's a, that's a, it's really a, a deeper story. Um, but that that was my journey of moving from being completely oblivious. I love how the box is. It sounds more elaborate. But let me just say, I was oblivious. I was completely oblivious. I moved from realizing I was oblivious to consciously working on being better at not being oblivious. So let me ask you this question. What did it make you feel like when you came to that realization? Crap. It really, it really did. It was like, um, and it's in many ways, somewhat remorse. It'd be different if it was, oh, you know, if I were a carpenter and I realized, oh, I could have made that chair better. I could have, you know, built that home better 
whatever. And there, there's certain things, I suppose, if you're a craftsman that you look at things and say, I could have been better. In this case, my ignorance, my lack of actively pursuing the knowledge and understanding and then the uh, subsequent actions to be the best father and husband I could be came at a price for my family as they got used to daddy uh, being on an airplane, flying and hanging out with celebrities and doing all these cool stuff. People talk about what I did, mm -hmm. but man, I look back at it and and yeah, I mean, on paper, you've got some great creds. I mean, I can sit here yeah, and go through that. you've got in your past, uh, which makes me even feel more honored to be with you. But at the same time, just yeah, looking at those you can look at that life when you run around with all those big folks, right? Yeah. Um, but you were missing it still. You were I missing, missing, you were missing the most important celebrities in my life. And that was my wife and my children. Those are the most important celebrities in my life. And it's, you know, in my office now, I don't have pictures of me, you know, smooching up to celebrities and hanging out and doing shows. For a season, if you came into our office, you'd see all these gigantic shows we had done. And I mean, we still keep, you know, some of the awards, but a lot of the awards I put in boxes. Um, all those pictures I put in boxes and tucked away. The pictures that I keep around my desk are of my family. And to remind me of those unique people that I have um, have the privilege of having a relationship with and have a, a privilege of, I pray, serving and blessing and encouraging. Um, so did, that, you start, did you start losing business and go downhill when you did that? Well, we, we, uh, um, we, our business structure changed after my death, but for a number of reasons, number of reasons. I mean, number one was I wasn't going to just fly to Timbuktu on a whim because someone's going to pay me a large sum of money. <laughs> I actually looked at um, the price it would pay in terms of my time away and whether I was going to be um, on another living a long distance relationship. And, you know, everybody talks about long distance relationships like in a romantic sense. You know, it doesn't it's not spell. always make art grow fonder. I learned that when I was a singer songwriter and I was on tour. Yeah. And, uh, one year I was gone eight months out of the year on tour. Yeah. Uh, all together. And I'd come home once in a while, weekend, you know, get back around, whatever. But, um, you know, over a period of time, my wife was, um, she was the one having to take out the trash all the time, figuring out how the yard was going to get done, doing her job, doing everything else and all these things. Meanwhile, Matt's, all around the world singing and doing his thing and she's back home and it wasn't going well. It wasn't like because we had like, you know, other relationships going on or anything. It was just that absence always does not make the heart grow fonder. And there are some, yeah. things, <laughs> there are some values and things that need to shift. Right. And I had my eyes on the stars and I, I had all the right connections and all the right people and everything was going in a, in a place. And I was like, I'm going there because in my mind I was thinking if I can just get there, Right. Then, then she'll be happy, right? If I can just do this, then she'll get that. But the reality was, what she really wanted was, was, was just me. Yeah, I used to say uh, uh, the best love letter, you know, had had a a number with zeros and a dollar sign on it. And I went, oh, that isn't a love letter. <laughs> Shucks! And I took so long crafting it, you know. Yeah. So, so walk walk me through. I mean, that's pretty. A, a, a big diversion, but I hope that's a foundation for a lot of folks to go. I see that journey from oblivious to now not being oblivious to now. How do I become more conscious at removing my obliviousness to <laughs> how do I become so good? It's such a natural part of me that it is like riding a bike and for me, loving people and, and, um, and, and trying to be there for my, my, my kids, trying to be there for my wife, trying to be there for others in a way that lets them know that I truly do love them is become so natural for me. And, and so for, for this, I, every, I, everybody listening has to think, what skill set do you want to put into that box? What is the area that you're either unconsciously competent or completely unconscious of your incompetence 
Yeah. What is that? And kind of with that, I want to ask you, Matt, how do you, for me, I had the, my episode, how do people learn to get to that fifth gear? What's the discovery process? What is this process to move through those boxes deliberately? Because it's that's those are deliberate. That's not a river where you just jump into and it happens. No, no, not at all. And, you know, as we're saying these stories, it doesn't necessarily have to be as big as what we're talking about. It could be a smaller scale thing that actually becomes a bigger part of your life. It could be small parts, could be, you know, something you're doing at work or, or maybe something at home. It could be your exercise plan, your diet plan, health plan, whatever. There's all kinds of ways that you can look at this. Um, we're talking big picture here right now, which is, which is vitally important for people. If you don't have the big picture, you, know, you talked about a little bit ago, which, which is something I refer to as, as prescriptive in, in the Christian realm, I, I call it prescriptive theology. And uh, prescriptive theology is just a place where, whoa, we're huge. It's a place where you actually um, do things and learn things. And that was crazy. And I, I, I just wanted to jump in and say, welcome to Big Head TV. <laughs> that was so funny. That was funny. Don't press that button again, Matt. I became consciously competent right then. So, um, it comes to that place where no, I don't remember where I was going right here, but oh my lord, what was I just talking about? What are you talking about the, the term in the Christian faith? You yes, okay. so it's a it's a, it's basically a prescriptive theology. So what it means is, you know, grandma and grandpa have been doing these things for so long, and they they say these things, do these things, and you come to this house and you're raised a certain way, and and you just, I mean, grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad, they wouldn't lie to you. They're not going to lead you down the wrong path, but what they what they say you believe and you just go along with everything because that's that's who you love. That's who you believe. And you you believe the things that they're teaching you and you just go for it. Right. It's called prescriptive theology. Um, whereas if somebody actually wants to be a student of what you do, like if I'm going to be a, a follower of Christ, I want to read the Bible, then I, have to, I actually have to do that for myself. Mm -hmm. And I have to actually try to apply these things to my life. And I might find that that grandma and grandpa might have been misled in a few areas because they they were taught something that may not exactly be true. So it's called prescriptive theology without going deep into that rabbit hole right there. But there's well, time. You do have a degree in theology. You are a pastor and you have a degree in theology. So that's a good thing. It's the same thing in life. So besides, you know, uh, Christian stuff, I mean, it comes down to the same thing with, with uh, you know, maybe your father was a mechanic backyard mechanic and been doing things for you. Great mechanic, but maybe he did X, Y, and Z through these particular methods for all this time is fine. But if he would have done it this way, it could have been done quicker, faster, and more efficiently. He just didn't know. But it still doesn't mean the way he did was wrong. It just took a lot longer. Maybe you can learn a different way. But if you go by the way dad did it, you're going to take longer, right? So there's different ways you can look at that whole thing. So when it comes into to this perspective, I mean, the first place is going to be awareness. Yeah. Uh, it has to become an awareness of a couple of things. One, you want to to do some some inventory on in your life. You want to do some things to say, I want to I want to be better. I want to make, put myself on the chopping block. I'm willing to do what it takes to to be the best I can to live into what I'm supposed to be doing or whatever that may be. Um, even if you're top notch, you're one of the best people in the field that you do. I mean, there's always room for growth. We always are learning, right? So something in this position, the fifth gear, is taking it to the next step. It is saying, I'm going to take everything that I'm I'm really good at, things that I'm in autopilot on, things that I just do, and I'm going to put that out there and try to pull it apart into pieces and examine what that really is and, and how and why I do the things that I do. You know, if this happens, I, I respond quickly to do this. Right? Well, why did you do that? And how do you how do you explain that to somebody else? It's like, uh, for example, you know, as a music, I said, like as a musician, I could do certain things and play a guitar and just do it. And somebody could say, well, how did you just play that chord? Well, you just put your fingers here and put them there. You just strum it. And there you go. The other person's fighting to figure where their fingers go. And it sounds like <laughs> just well, it looks like I'm doing the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Well, just do this. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> doesn't work that way. <laughs> I mean, you have to take some time, right? So this is where you break, you break that apart uh, for yourself personally and, and look at places where you could 
grow, obviously, in a learning capacity. Last, last week, we talked about identifying this. That's a, a place of awareness. And, um, and today, we were going to get, which we're not going to have enough time to get into it now, but it'll be great. We'll do it the next show. Is, is that place of learning? Like, how do I actually learn what it is that I'm doing that I don't know that I'm doing so all the people that don't know what they're doing can know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's interesting that you talk about that. I especially, I mean, the guitar one's easy, but because you can picture that when you think about learning that new skill that maybe you, you're supposed to be competent at, that you're not competent at, or you want to be competent at, but you didn't know, the it sounds like two foundational ingredients is not just the awareness of it but then the willingness to be patient through the process mm. and to give yourself grace. I mean, if you're, if you're learning that guitar and you go, what, whatever sound you made, you know, <laughs> but yeah. it, it hit it. and you have to be able to say, you know what? It doesn't sound like uh, when Matt Crump plays it. Um, so I must be bad at it. Right. I, I must not be, I, I must be incapable. Maybe it's, I'm never supposed to do this because I'm not there. Um, but it sounds like if this is a, something that you are feeling drawn into and feeling this is an area that you have a core competence for which you need to develop, you have to give yourself grace and patience through the learning process. So after a day goes by, now you become competent, right? Absolutely. And going back to what you just said with the guitar analogy is uh, one of the places where people always quit is within the first month of uh, taking guitar lessons um, because it hurts a lot. And the only way you're going to be able to get to the place where you want that song that's playing your head, watching the way somebody else plays the guitar is you have to press past the pain. And until you're willing to press past that pain, you'll never play the guitar ever it's going to hurt like crazy like physically hurt until it gets to a point where you develop these things called calluses on your fingers where your fingers are so sensitive on the tips and you play and people are like that hurts so bad or so bad and they just i can't do it i quit right but if you can press past the pain eventually it's not going to hurt anymore you're going to be able to do it right so to have that drive, that tenacity, it, it takes a couple of things. One, it does take exactly what you said, patience. It takes someone willing to do it, but it also takes an incredible person to bring you along that process. You need somebody who's pressed past that pain already on the other side of the pain and says, come over. You can look, you can do this. Watch me. I, I'm doing this. I did the same thing you're doing and I know exactly what you're feeling but you have to press past that pain. You either are going to, or you're not. There's just no other way around it. Since you're talking about the pain in that, that process of moving through those blocks, do you think that there's sometimes there's a risk that people believe that if it's hard, it's not meant to be, or if it's painful, it's not meant to be, uh, that it isn't just, oh, it hurts, I'm going to stop. But there's a belief system that pervades yeah. the business uh, world. In fact, you know, virtually all, all of our worlds that says, boy, this is just too hard or too painful. It must not. Um, it must not be meant to be. Must not be meant to me. And, uh, and that includes being in a relationship. You know, oh. I talk about being in a relationship, learning a business skill, growing a business. Um, playing the guitar. I mean, it seems like you're talking about a, a, a prescription and a scenario that's consistently a part of doing great things because they're hard. Absolutely. I mean, the, you're always going to face it, always. Um, but when you are able to, for the first time, when you're able to press past that pain for the first time, it sets the stage for everything else you're doing in life. Does yeah. it make everything else easy? No, but it does. It does show you that it's possible. I think that's a big difference. 
and yeah. and of course it's that mindset that mentality and it may be it may be that that prescriptive thought process where somebody grew up around people that didn't have a lot of faith or didn't have a lot of belief in their own selves or or whatever and then you think well i don't know if i can do this or if you want to start a new business and you know <laughs> one thing i learned in retail when i had retail stores is you got to spend money to make money and if you can't do that it's you know there's a lot of things you start it's, you have to be willing to press past the pain like i don't know how i can do this that's why a lot of businesses struggle so hard on the front side because you have to spend so much money you know and to be able to do what you're doing some people you know bonus out and get something that just blows up from the jump right that's pretty rare for the most of everybody else it takes a lot of work and it's it's really getting your fingers hurt and you're like i gotta press past this pain and develop those calluses that don't make you numb to the situation because i can still have my fingers hurt with calluses because i can play the guitar because i love it and i could play the guitar for several hours and after a while my fingers start hurting right yeah. it, Mind you, so you never go numb, but it does it does help build a tolerance to certain things. And when you have that tolerance there, um, you're able to move into other, other areas that you couldn't move into before. And that's where you really get into that place of unconscious competence and probably where we're going to have to pick up uh, the next next show we've got because we're at the end of our time here today, um, where we dig into that area of of learning. What does that mean? How do I how do I press past this pain? So just to try to summarize, I mean, when you talk about that whole journey leading to unconscious competence, the, the, uh, um, obviously this is a journey that people can have when they're learning something for the first time, uh, put in new situations. And I'm thinking that, um, you know, for a lot of friends and connections that I have on LinkedIn, um, that, you know what, they're good at a lot of things. And they've been good at a lot of things and they're masters of their craft, you know, uh, but we are in a situation they've never, ever been in before. Yeah. Um, so the combination of whether it's a, a COVID situation, an economic situation, uh, in our case on the West Coast, wildfire situation. You in know, your backyard do, right now. In Absolutely. our backyard, yeah. How do you run a business thinking, okay, um, I've got to be able to pull the hard drives, you know, and a change of clothes and have it in my car ready to bolt at any point because the office could burn, the home could burn, um, you know. And so it, there's a lot of uh, situations. Of course, we haven't had, of course, we have killer bees. We've had plagues this year. Um, in fact, we're going through the list and my kids were pointing out the only thing we have really left because we have pestilence, all that is uh, a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> we, still, we still have that box to check. And when the zombie apocalypse comes, I say it's half joking. The thing is, what are the skills you're going to have to learn if you had to press down hard and it hurt you to play guitar? Yeah. As they were the guitar of life. Right. You're going to have to play in a way you've never played before. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to learn skills you've never learned before. You're going to have to modify behaviors in a way you've never had to modify before. And so this path that you talk about, Matt, makes so much sense and might be more relevant than any other time that most of us have ever experienced in business. Absolutely. This is a place where we're, we're going to have to press past the pain in our in our world, our culture right now. And there's there's businesses out there, people out there, folks that are watching, listening to us today. Uh, we all have to move into some different directions right now. Absolutely. So uh, I think personally, something like this could be very, very beneficial, especially for folks that might have to um, redefine their their lives. There's folks yeah. out there that have to start over with something different. Mm -hmm. And instead of thinking I can't or I don't know or this might not be possible or my fingers really hurt, I don't think I can make this. No, 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 no. There's there's definitely, definitely a way on the other side of this. But, um, you know, you just need some tools. And, uh, you know, some of the tools we've had in the past are fantastic, but they may not necessarily be exactly what we need right now because this is something different. Um, so hopefully what we're, what we're going to be going through will be enough here as we're in the as we're in the hangar here at flight school and giving people opportunities, 
my high that uh, hopefully what you're hearing will help you to do that. And uh, I hope you're excited about this. If you do want some of the notes we have here, what I've got with the fifth gear, uh, you can email us. That that email is right here, flightschoolonline at gmail.com. Uh, we can send that to you or you can DM us, message us where you're watching us from, and we'd be happy to share some of that information with you because we're throwing a lot of, lot of info out. And if you'd like to be a part of that and, and understand what that is, happy to share it with you. But uh, so, we are, so in our next episode, yes. we'll actually move into that piece that we've had teed up, we've had ready, you know, <laughs> we just haven't served it to the cabin yet, but it's already cooked and prepared, is how do you learn? and understand about yourself and those skill sets and to deliberately walk through those blocks to the fifth gear. Yeah. It's yes. how do you. Or raise your seats and lower your trays because uh, <laughs> we're, we're fixing to come through and serve up some goodies here as we learn about the fifth gear in our lives and our unconscious competencies. Great. Bill, thanks again for another fantastic episode. I sure do hope folks have had a great time. And if they want to get a hold of you, it's pretty easy to find you at LinkedIn or you can go to I'm Spirit Media. Yeah, or you can reach me. You can email me, Bill, at spiritmedia.com. If you're interested in hearing about our the seven disciplines of relationship marketing, which is one of the foundations that we teach from and practice every day in our creative agency, you can go to 7D, that 7DRM.com. And, yes. uh, and you can uh, get a hold there's of it. Right there are free downloads, too. There's great ways for people to get engaged with that. They just need to just need to go, y'all. Go. Go, y'all. Go, oh, y'all. All right. So until next time, fly high, everybody. We'll see you soon. Each week, Bill and I bring you episodes to help you get and stay grounded in your business and your life with lessons that help you fly higher heights and know exactly what your flight plan is. Join us each week on Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern and 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Welcome.